Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to analyze the Hello World C++ program. So in other words, what we're going to do is go through and look at the meaning of the different lines of code that exist in our program. So our first line here is pound sign include IO stream. And basically this tells the compiler to include a service for stream input and output. The C++ input and output library is based on the concept of streams. And an input stream is a source of data and an output stream is a destination for data. So include means to go out and grab this IO stream out of the library. So in my editor, if I look over here under external dependencies, if I expand that, we can come down here. We can look at the things that are in the library, and one of them is IO stream. This is what we're actually including. It's going to grab this and make it available for us within our program. Let me collapse this back up. Okay, next is using namespace standard. This tells the compiler to use what's called the standard namespace. Namespaces are a mechanism for avoiding naming conflicts in large programs. And again, for right now, you should just understand that this is something to include. But if I comment this out, right, if we're not going to use the namespace standard, you'll see that we start to get some errors that pop up on our screen. So it doesn't know when we comment out using namespace standard, it doesn't understand what C out is or the end line. So we said that this is for avoiding naming conflicts. So if you leave out using namespace standard, then we have to be more specific to say STD for the standard and double colons for C out. And then we'd also have to repeat that for the end line. So you may see some examples online or other books or resources where you might see some statements written in this type of format. So that means that they have left out the using namespace standard and opted to write it in this way. I think it's a lot less confusing to leave in using namespace standard and then not having to write this directive in here to say go to the standard namespace and use C out and use end line. Next we have the int main function. Now every C++ program is going to contain a main function and it's automatically going to run whatever is inside these curly braces which inside this these curly braces this is called a block and this code block is automatically executed or run when a C++ program runs. So main is what's called a function, and all functions return a value, and it's going to return a value of an integer, and integers are whole numbers. And you can see that at the end of our main function, we have return zero. So return zero gets passed back when this function ends. Now the value zero indicates that the program finished successfully. We have comments in here. So a comment has two forward slashes. You can also have another style of comment where uh, a multi-line comment where we have a forward slash asterisk and then an asterisk and a forward slash which would let us comment out several lines at once. But this can be useful in leaving longer comments or also maybe blocking out some code that might be causing you some problems. Everything may be working until you get to a certain point, so you could comment it out and then test your program and see if it works without that. And then uncomment it again so that you don't have to worry about deleting and then repasting things in again. So we have C out, which is for outputting content to the console. So we have the console output, if you can think of it in terms of that. This is the insertion operator. 
And so the insertion operator is going to take our string, which is inside double quotes here, and output it to the console. Our other insertion operator are two less than symbols. And then we have the ENDL, which is for end line, and it denotes an end of line marker. So when this is sent to C out, the cursor is moved to the first column of the next screen row. So just like pressing enter, like if I were here and I pressed enter, it moves my cursor to the beginning of the next row. That's what ENDL does, our end of line marker. And system pause will pause the console screen long enough so that we can read what's on it. So if I run this, the system pause in this particular development environment will pop up a separate console screen and pause it with press any key to continue. So this is the system pause, press any key to continue. Without it, what happens is if I comment out system pause and now I run it, you'll see the console screen pop open really fast and then disappear. So we include that in some development environments. It's not always a requirement, so it depends on the program that you're using for your development environment, whether that is included or not. So if you don't need it and you see it in other examples, you can simply comment it out or not include it at all. So that is an overview of the Hello World program, and hopefully you got a better understanding of what all of this means and what role it plays in your programs.